All right, I am so sorry, guys. This is my second time around for those of you who are just seeing this. Okay, so I apologize. All right, so let's get started. I literally had an eyelash in my eye. It was killing me. All right, so we are going to start over, right? All right, so now that I have the eyelash out of my eye, I am ready to go. <laughs> All right, I apologize for that, guys. All right, so I'm gonna start over. For those of you who don't know, I know, my, I had literally an eyelash in my eye, it was killing me. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Raven Woods and I'm the CEO and founder of Autism Mama Rocks, the IEP, and I help parents gain the knowledge and the confidence to become the CEO of their IEP meeting. And I love what I do. I've been doing it for 13 plus years. I'm a COPA advocate and I just have a lot of fun doing it. And yes, I have a child with special needs and she is on the spectrum. All right, so we are gonna hop into this. All right, so today we're gonna talk about the PWN. I showed you for a second. Um, I actually make all kinds of stuff, you know, in regards to the stuff I talk about. So just so you know, <laughs> I go off my own stuff that I put together. Um, so. I want you guys to first click notifications. I want you to share this because we need to share the love. There's so many people out there with children with special needs that really just want to learn and want to not be so stressed out like we all have been lately. And that's just now. I mean, think about how we are normally. So now it's doubled, right? So share the love. Click notifications so you know when I go live so you can catch the replay or catch me live. And when you catch me live, you always get questions answered, all right? So post a one below if you're uh, if you're new and it's your first through third time. Post a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. I wanna get to know you and if you haven't hopped over to the group, the group's awesome, okay? Awesome, thank you, Jessie, she shared it, okay. So we're gonna hop into it. And again, I apologize, you know, I had an eyelash in my eye, so it was just not gonna happen, okay? Um, so with that said, I'm excited about tonight and I actually have a really nice surprise for you. I mean, it's not like a surprise surprise, like me handing it to you, but I am handing you something that I actually just found out about. And I know a lot about special education and this isn't about special education, but it's, Something that you're not going to want to not know about because when I saw it and heard about it, I was like, oh my gosh, I have not known about that. And that could have saved my life so many times. So stick around. Okay. I mean it. You guys are really going to want to know about this. Okay. So one below if you're new one, two, three times, I'll give you till your third time, but that's it. All right. And then post a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. And if you're catching the replay, do that too. I want to get to know you. All right. So we're going to first talk about the PWN. Okay. You go into your IEP meeting, you have a conversation and you're talking about the, you know, the reading therapy. I seem to talk about a lot about, you know, reading, but you know, um, you talk, you're talking about reading therapy and your concern and you change two or three goals on your IEP, all right? Or you add a goal or two, or you take something away. Shoot, if I do an IEP makeover for you, it's all torn up, and if you don't get a PWN, something is wrong with the school, all right? Because the law is the law is the law. Every state has to adhere to IDEA. Okay, the, what is law in Virginia and Maryland and California is the law in Alaska and Hawaii and Texas and everywhere else, okay? Just not overseas. And so in regards to the, the IDEA 2004, because again, it was changed from 97 to 2004, and amendments were put into play in 2004, which was really cool, and we're gonna get to that. But so you have this conversation, right? And you add things or say you go in and you're like, I want a one on one and you talk about the one on one and that you want this one on one. And then the school says no. All right. But they do add the goals and stuff like that, that you either wanted to tweak or change or add, etc. OK, so then you get what's called a prior written notice. Usually they're sent to you either immediately or up to 10 days later. All right. And prior meaning <laughs> prior to um, the 
finalization of the IEP, okay? And you want to make sure that you get this because it is giving you the chance to get legal counsel, hire an advocate, go to mediation, put your IEP and stay put. You know, you have multiple different things that you can do. You can write an email and say, I wanna reconvene. There's so many things that you want to do if you don't agree with that prior written notice. But if you do, then it's fine. And then you sign the IEP after you go through it and you're good to go, right? So the federal special education law, which is IDEA, so you're gonna hear different words in regards to that. Um, federal special education law, IDEA, Individuals with Disability Education Act, same thing guys, okay? And that gives you the right and the responsibility to participate in everything regarding your child, okay? There was a PWN that was given to me back in, gosh, I think it was September, and I didn't agree with any of it. Half of it wasn't even something we talked about, and other things were lies, and I was livid. So what I do, okay, is just, here's a tip for you, is when you respond to the school, forward it. So click forward, then in that little space before you get to their email, in red, yellow, green, blue, whatever, in a different color, say see below. Then go and respond in that color that you choose to each and every thing. So it's real clear as to what you're saying, what you're disagreeing to, what you agree to, etc. I always do it like this because it makes it clear there's no guessing game as to what you're talking about. I never ever write in paragraph form when I respond to the school because it has to be either bulleted, numbered, or written underneath whatever it is that they said. Or, and I ask, I request for them to do the same thing because then it keeps things very clear. All right, so the prior written notice means prior to, all right, the school district taking or refusing to take certain actions. They must give you the notice, all right? They must, all right? This is hands down must. I can't tell you how many people, I just sent you guys out an email. So if you're on my email list, you got an email tonight and I was talking about this. It's one of the biggest mistakes I'm seeing in IEP makeovers that I'm doing. That and another thing, you'll have to read the email. Um, and I'll tell you the other thing, will will break you completely, all right? And it's not goals. And it will break you and your child and could hurt, hurt that child so bad in regards to um, their IEP that you'll, you'll very, it will be very difficult for you to fight for anything. So you gotta be real careful, all right? So read that email. If you have any questions, email me back. Um, so, Parent consent has to be given to the prior written notice being accepted. So you can say, I refuse this prior written notice because of X, Y, Z, and that's why you wanna respond underneath, all right? You wanna make sure um, that in that prior notice, it's very clear that there's an explanation of why the school wants to make a change or what change you may have made, okay? Um, Am I like sticking like on the um, camera? I don't know, I thought I saw myself freeze. Sorry about that. Um, you wanna make sure that um, there's a description of what's going on and what transpired as to the meeting because that's what has to be on there too, not just agree or disagree. It has to be what transpired, what happened. We talked about da 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 you know, and we agreed with this, we disagreed with this, all right? So it has to be very clear as to kind of it's really like the meeting notes. Um, and a lot of people say, I want the meeting notes. Well, the meeting notes is really like the prior written notice because it's all the information that was, kind of the, you know, the big picture of what was discussed in the IEP meeting and then what was refused and approved, okay? And information in that um, is all legal. So if you don't say anything, it goes in your child's scholastic file as is. 
okay? So I see people hopping on. So post a one below if you're new, one through third time, two below if you're an oldie but goodie. And don't forget to click notifications and share. All right, we got to share the love, right? Everybody's going through a rough time right now. Things are very difficult. Things are stressful. And everybody's worried about their kids and education. So you got to really share the love and think about others as well as ourselves, right? All right, so the IEP team should come to an agreement in regards to everything regarding the IEP, all right? At the, by the end of that meeting, I literally go page by page, just like we talked about the other day, right? Over on the group. <laughs> um, but I shared in my email the message, the, the message and the live that I did over on the group the other day that was rocking awesome. So you guys got to check it out. All right. So make sure that you get a prior written notice after your IEP meeting within 10 days. Did you know that you can actually make a state complaint if you don't get one? Um, and then make sure you always, always, hey, Diana, how are you? Hi, Nancy, Grace, Michelle, Tara. Goodness, everybody's here tonight. Um, so can you guys tell me, am I freezing? It just seems like I'm freezing on the on the camera. Let me know, because it is on my end. All right, so for an IEP, if parents agree with the proposed IEP, they'll say yes. And if they disagree, then they'll say no. Usually what I do is I just say, you know, I want to reconvene and we fight it out. Um, and it goes like that. Normally we don't have to reconvene and that's why I'm going to get to the amendment. All right. In 2004, um, the federal government decided to throw in what's called an amendment where a parent does not have to go to an IEP meeting with the team that you can meet with an administrator or a teacher or whomever that is part of that team and edit, basically change up, modify um, your IEP, okay? So if you and the gen ed teacher all right, decide to change something that she's kind of in charge of, then it can be agreed that, yes, it's freezing. Oh, no. Okay. Is it better now? Is it good? Hopefully it's good now. Let me know. Okay. All right. That sucks. Okay. Sorry. All right. Hi, Mercedes. Trisha, how are you? All right, and is it Tanja? Is it Tanja? That's a cool name. Um, so welcome, guys. All right, don't forget, post a one below if you're new. I want to know if you're new. And hi, Nancy, welcome. And a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. All right, so basically, um, if the PWN, just so you know, is not delivered to you in 14 days, I would make a state complaint, okay? I don't play around. I don't say, hey, don't forget. It's not my job to babysit. I don't babysit, all right? So if they don't send it within 14 days, make a straight up state complaint. I can promise you they'll never do it again, all right? So PWN, PWN, PWN. They are very important. And make sure you read your procedural safeguards. And if you don't understand them, make sure you ask, all right? You can message me. You can message somebody else, whatever. But find out what it means, all right? And... um. You know what, maybe I should just, oh, okay. I know, my God, what is up with that? All right, if it does it again, I'll log off and log back on. All right, so with that said, I am gonna talk about the amendment really quick, and I'm gonna tell you um, they're really cool because you can actually amend your IEP all over the place, and it's fine. It's allowed. If you can agree, um, then amend it. You know, if you think, you know, say your child um, masters a goal and, you know, maybe it's three goals in math or reading. All right. And you don't really want to go to an IEP meeting. Then you can, you know, if there's a reading specialist, you can talk to her. If there's, you know, a special ed teacher or gen ed teacher, then just talk to them and say, hey, can we just edit these goals and update them and, not have to reconvene as a team. And more than likely, they will be open to that because who wants to all get together to change three or four goals or a word here and there or whatever. So always ask if you can amend, all right? And so basically what you'll do, what I do, is I make um, my... IEP into a doc. I have found that it's very difficult to make some people's IEPs 
a dock because they have um, kind of boxes and squares and you know different things in their IEP. So then I'll just put it into Adobe Acrobat and I will make notes, all right? And then I send it to the school that way and I make notes as to what I want changed. So then I got a copy of what notes I made and where, because you click it and it shows you where, and the school has that as well. So it's real clear as to what's going to be changing. Um, and they can actually do that to you as well. And it's just done in Adobe Acrobat. So uh, I really like that because it makes things real clean and clear. All right. So it literally has a line from where it needs to be in the IEP to the note. All right. And the comment. So that is really cool. So take advantage of amendments, all right? Take advantage of the fact that you get PWNs that will tell you in detail what they approved, what they didn't approve, and look for things about, you know, what's going on as far as did that really get talked about in your meeting? You know, it'll make you really think back, which is another reason to record, record, record. I really feel bad for you guys that are a two-party state, but you can always ask to record. If they say no, that's a red flag, all right? So red flag, red flag, red flag. Hi, Ruby, how are you? Is it good now, Tara? Is it good? Um, I don't see it freezing, so it's cool. <laughs> but there it went again. Oh, well. All right, so um, basically, what if they refuse to change the goals you disagreed with? Go to <clears throat> no, you never want to just go to due process. Due process. I've fought the school for forever and I've never been to due process. I mean, due process is like the last of the last. I mean, you do not want to go to due process unless you have to. But don't be that parent that is afraid of it. All right. Or afraid of making I make state complaints. I can't even tell you how many state complaints I've made. I can't even count. Um, so be adamant about what you want. And, you know, I may I've made comments before. Um, if we can't figure this out, I, I will make sure that you do so much paperwork that your head's going to spin. And I do, because you know what? Even if I hypothetically just say I lost a state complaint. Do you know how much paperwork they have to do just to rebuttal what you say? And um, so it's a pain in the butt for them. So, you know, it's one of those things where if I have to make them do a ton of paperwork and just be a royal pain in their butt, then I will. Um, I haven't had to do that in years. But in the beginning, you definitely have to make changes. You know, I have a parent, um, two clients actually, that I'm working with. And... Um, it's really freezing all over, isn't it, guys? What is up with that? Um, but basically, um, I like the fact that, um, you know, I, I will make complaints, you know? I just put Wi-Fi on, so maybe that will work better, guys. Hopefully, right? <laughs> all right. So um, I, I actually really like making state complaints, um, or I did. I will say, because it gets them moving. It's like, it's kind of like giving them a spanking on the butt. And then all of a sudden they start moving. Um, I have a client that I'm working with. You know, she got a message today. We just emailed the PWN to the school, the director of special education and other people. And guess what? She had not received any comments. They were ignoring her. They were stonewalling her. And um, she had not received any comments. She had she was so frustrated. And I emailed I underneath the PWN. I responded, and um, I was very aggressive, which I typically am in an email um, or responding to a PWN. I responded underneath the PWN in red, and um, I called them out on FAPE among other things. And I was pretty irate at the fact that they had been ignoring this parent, um, disregarding her thoughts, feelings, opinions, and everything else. Um, she knows her stuff, you know, not that, you know, she was not illiterate. She was not 
crazy. She was not asking for things that she shouldn't have been asking for. She was asking for everything within her rights and the school was just ignoring her. So I wrote an email. They got back to her today. Um, <laughs> and guess who got back to her? Um, the director of special education. Oh my God, that's awesome. And the supervisor on top of it. And they wanted to have a Zoom meeting today. So what did I do? I emailed back and said, how dare you um, email this parent and request a Zoom meeting today, how disrespectful of their thoughts and feelings and time. And if you would like to meet, then you can please respond to the PWN first, and then we can reconvene as a team to discuss the matters at hand. Because she wanted to discuss just her and the parent, she actually skipped over emailing me when we had requested for me to be CC'd in all emails. And I was the one who sent the PWN. Um, so they purposely skipped over me, sent it to the parent. The parent then sends it to me, says, what do I do? You know, they want to meet right now. <laughs> like it was a couple hours. And so I responded and I laid them out. You know, you don't email a parent and say, let's meet right now because you're the supervisor and director of special education because you feel threatened and you feel like, oh, let's talk this out. No, we're not going to talk this out. You're going to respond in writing to that PWN that tore you to pieces and you're going to respond to it accordingly. Then and only then will we talk after you put it all in writing. And that's what I said. And she didn't respond back yet. <laughs> But how dare her email this parent and say, let's meet right now to discuss this. You want to discuss it now? After all this time, you've ignored the parent and all of a sudden, I send you an email and you want to talk right now. Really? No, ma'am. You're not going to call the shots. It's not going to work that way anymore. The, the ball's not in your court anymore. It's in ours. So you're going to respond to that email. Then we'll talk. So that's what's happening. And um, it was funny because the parent said, oh, my God, I've never had this response before. Da, 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 da. And all it is, guys, it's not that she didn't know. It's not. She knew. But it was how to go about it in a different way and got to make an impact. You got to be strong, not rude, but strong with your words. They have to have substance. All right. And you can't fear the unknown of how they may be responding. All right, so know that. So let's recap, PWN, what's a PWN? Come on guys, come on, communicate with me. Tell me what a PWN is. A PWN is, what do you, when do you get it? Do you get it before, after, when do you get it? Come on guys, you guys can do this. Um, so tell me when you get a PWN. <laughs> And tell me, have you ever had, or give me a comment, post something, let me know, have you guys ever had or done an amendment? And has it been easy for you? Was it simple? Yeah, prior written notice. Mm -hmm. And have you guys done a prior written notice? Have you gotten one? Have you ever responded back to one? Hmm. All right. Prior to the IEP, thank you, Grace. The PWN is, gi is given prior to the IEP being signed. That is right, all right? So you have the IEP before, yeah. So you get have the IEP meeting, you get the prior written notice. You sign the IEP or you don't sign the IEP and you respond to the PWN, all right? The PWN is very, very important. What goes in that is them basically saying, hey, this is what we talked about. So if there's stuff in there that you never talked about, you have got to say something. Or if there's stuff in there where they said, yeah, we're going to give you X, Y, Z, and then they don't put X, Y, Z in the prior written notice, you got to say something, okay? Because if you don't, you're not going to get what you were told you're going to get in that IEP meeting. I can't tell you how many people I talk to who say that. They told me, but they told me, they told me in the IEP meeting that my son was going to get two times a week speech and he's been getting one time a week speech. Why is he only getting one time a week speech? Why didn't they put it in his draft IEP? Was it in the prior written notice? No. Did you say anything about it? 
No. Did you email them to say anything in regards to the prior written notice? No. All right. Well, that was you agreeing to everything that was done, that was put into that PWN. So that is exactly what happened. That is what you said by not responding. All right. Okay. Um, prior written notice before the meeting. No. Not before the meeting, before you sign the IEP. So you have the meeting, then you get a prior written notice and you should get the draft IEP that you discussed in the meeting and then you um, sign the IEP or not sign the IEP. All right. Yes. No, it wasn't easy requesting an amendment. Okay. Who did you ask, Lucy? Um, prior written notice before the meeting, prior written notice. Good job, guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, Trisha, how are you? And gosh, we have a lot of new people on you. So if you guys are hopping on, I know people are hopping on and off, it's late, but post a one below if it's your first through third time, two below if you're an oldie but goodie. Hi, Debbie, welcome. And make sure you guys say hi if you haven't joined the group at Autism Mama Rocks IEP group. Definitely join, guys. It's awesome. People post stuff all the time. Tomorrow was Picture Friday. Everybody loves Picture Friday. Um, we post pictures of our kids and people talk and people show paperwork that, you know, they want us to comment on or they need help with. And so it's a great group. And then um, click notifications if you want to know when I go live. All right. It's a lot better than if I say eight o'clock because I'm always late. Always. I try. I really try. But I am late. All right, so the notification will let you know. <laughs> okay. All right, so Christina says, so you get um, the PWN after an IEP. Yes, an IEP meeting. That's right. Grace says one, so welcome, welcome. And Trish says a one, she's new. I have some oldies but goodies on here, so they will welcome you, of course. We have Kat on here and Michelle. Oh, gosh, I love you guys. I love that name, Tanja, too. There's a girl in here named Tanja. I really love that name. All right, so you guys ready for a little surprise? Go ahead, post questions if you have questions about PWNs and amendments. All right, you're welcome to tell me your stories about PWNs. Um, the PWN is given the same day as the meeting here. That's cool. Um, hopefully it's accurate. <laughs> um Yes, that's awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna talk to you about something that's really cool. All right, you ready for this? Hi, Amy, welcome, welcome. All right, so get your pens and papers out. You guys are gonna want to write this down. All right, give me a thumbs up if you guys got a pen and a piece of paper, even if it's a sticky note. All right, you guys want to write this down. Thumbs up, hearts, something. Do they always give the PWN or do you have to request it? Don't request it. Report them to the state. Here's why I say that, guys. I'll tell you why. Because if you stop doing the things you're doing now, which is, hey, can you send me the PWN or hey, can you do this? Or hey, can you do that? T telling them things that they should already know and should be doing because it's law. Then they're going to keep doing the things that they're doing. But you now know that the PWN is required. So if they don't provide a PWN in 14 plus days, then you need to send a complaint to the state. All right, that you never received a PWN after the IEP meeting and you're concerned because you have no idea what was agreed to, what wasn't agreed to, what the discussion was, what the notes were, the school won't provide it to you. And you know, they'll be founded on that and then the school will never do it again, basically. All right, you guys ready? All right, so you guys need to get an app called otter o-t-t-e-r dot a-i well you can go to the website but it's otter dot a-i o-t-t-e-r dot a-i all right let me tell you what this thing does this is so cool and i just found out about this can you believe it it's free all right for 500 minutes or something like that 600 minutes 
and only $10 for like 6,000 minutes. Get this. Not only does it record, it transcribes it for you and then emails it to you. This is crazy. How did I not know about this? I just found out the day I did the group of um, call here on live. When was it? Two days ago? Yeah. Tuesday. I, I was floored. So Otter AI, O-T-T-E-R. Have you guys ever heard about that and you didn't tell me? Anybody? So O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. Get the app. You can go online as well. Anyway, get it on your phone. When you go into an IEP meeting, test it first, play with it first, and then press play. You put your email in, all this other stuff. Then when you're done, you press stop. And guess what it does? You upload it to your email. And not only did it record it for you, it transcribed the whole thing. Really? And I just found out about this. Does it do phone conversations as well? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, new info. Me too. And I can't wait to use it. I know. But um, I, I've been having my stuff transcribed with Rev. Um, but I could not believe this when I found out. I could not believe it. Um, here, I'll show you the app. It's the one in this bottom corner. See, O-T-T-E-R. And that's what it looks like. It has the O-I-I. It's right next to the Rev. All right, so that's what it looks like. Otter, O-T, can someone write it in the comments for me? It's O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. All right. Here's the crazy thing. All right, this is why I say record, 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 and hopefully you guys are recording your kids every single day, sending your emails. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, she wrote it down there. It's in the comments, O-T-T-E-R dot A-I. Not only does it record, but it transcribes everything. Freaking genius. Um, like, I can't believe I didn't know about this. I mean, I could kick myself in the butt, but... You don't know what you don't know, right? Kind of like the post I posted a little while ago. All right, so here's the thing that's awesome about recording is if you don't record, you're not gonna most likely remember everything because we only retain 7% of the things we hear. So if you don't record, you're gonna misplace things that were said and not remember exactly word for word what was said. I like quoting people, so I want recordings. Thank God I'm in a one-party state, but if you're not, just request it. And in all honesty, if you record, you record, you just can't use it, right? Grace isn't on here, right? <laughs> just kidding. Um, but bottom line, if you're in a two-party state, you gotta ask, okay? Um, Okay, you gotta ask, you know, do whatever you guys gotta do. Um, but if you're in a two-party state, you know, you have to make sure you ask. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know if people know how to read between the lines, but you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm not telling you to make decisions you shouldn't do. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so screw two party states. Pennsylvania is one of them. Um, California is one of them. Um, but just ask, you know, I mean, I'm not sure, you know, just ask. All right. So another thing, um, <laughs> I, um, wanted to talk to you guys about is, um, your present levels, all right? If you got my email, you know that's important. Um, a lot of my IEP makeovers, I'm finding that parents are not agreeing with the present levels, but they didn't know that they could say anything since it wasn't a goal or um, something they thought that they had control over or could change. 
if your present level, so it's called PLAF, so present level of academic achievement and functional performance, if that is anything is wrong on your IEP, you need to make sure that you make a comment and statement in writing regarding that. And if the present levels are wrong, you need to make sure that you make them right, okay? Always have objective data if you can, um, which is kind of the backing up of what it is that you're saying. Um, but that can be video. Like for example, right now, you're really in control of those present levels because they have no idea. They don't see your child right now. So just make sure that you are recording like I've talked to you guys about. Make sure that you are um, taking notes every single day. Go on my website and get the um, daily action sheet if you want to. Um, you can also and should be also emailing your school team every single week and sending impactful videos. All right, you wanna make sure that the videos that you're sending that hopefully you're recording every day when you're teaching your kids. And, you know, like we've said, record those things, you know, record everything. But you want to send the impactful videos that are showing regression or behavior changes or something different that wasn't what was there before they left school. All right. So when they left school, where is it they were? And then what changed? All right. So that's what you need to be getting um, because that's going to show what's going on. Now, don't put up with um, teachers and schools because IDEA is still in place. Your rights are still in place. So the minute school starts back, IDEA and your IEP is in place. But IDEA is still in place whether your IEP is in place or not. All right, so if school's open, the IEP's in place. If it's not, it's not. But IDEA is still there, all right, and available. <laughs> um, not that it matters if, you know, um, the school's closed, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, you want to make sure you're taking notes. I want you guys all to get compensatory services for your kids because they deserve it. And a lot of them are going to need it. So record, record, record. Record is like having everything in writing, but right now you have to record because your kids aren't in school and they're not going to believe what you put in writing. So once they're back in school, then you can put it in writing and it goes like that. All right. So now you're going to put it in recording and in writing and you're covering your butt. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions about a PWN, about making an amendment, how easy or difficult it is to make an amendment? Um, they definitely like making amendments with me because they don't like to see me. <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, and they definitely don't want to meet with me because they know that my IEP meetings last anywhere from three to four hours or more. Um, and they won't get up from that table till we're done. And um, so they'd much rather make an amendment. And plus it's hard to get the, all the team together. And they also know that they don't have a choice but to get everybody together. And it's really around your schedule to be quite honest. Um, they have to go above and beyond and to, according to IDEA, to the maximum extent possible to make sure the parent is there. Um, so yes. All right. So don't forget Otter AI, O-T-T-E-R dot AI. It is in the comments. Thank you to Cynthia. All right. So Cynthia said, just a reminder about the PM. What PM? Did you PM me? Um, Emmett says, hello, welcome. I've been told the same thing. What were you told? I'm all over the place. I talk so much that I don't even know what, um, unless I catch that question right then. Um, Tanja said, what happens if the parent refused the current IEP meeting um, adjourned due to lack of academic data? Refuse the current IEP. Um, Okay, so explain that a little bit. So you refuse, if I get this right, keep type to me though. Um, 
you refused the IEP because there was a lack of data. And who adjourned the meeting? Or who tabled the meeting? That's tabled. Um, who, who tabled the meeting? You or the school? Um, Grace says, um, many times a special review has been pushed down to a parent's teacher conference because there is no change to the IEP. What's a special review? Special review. I've never heard of a special review. Um, here we are a charter school. We do things differently. What do you do different? Because the charter school is still within the district and has to adhere to district and state laws. Same with private schools. If your child um, is put into a private school by the district or the parent puts a child in a private school because the district isn't adhering to FAPE and they won a due process hearing. So charter schools are just the same as going to public school. They have to adhere to IDEA and the same laws. They think that they can do their own thing, but legally they cannot. All right. They'll say, oh, we don't do that here. Or we're, we're a charter school. We're a private school. We don't do that. Mm -mm. Sorry. Nope, you still adhere to IDEA. Um, charter schools are in the same district, you know, and unless it's a private school that it has no association with a public school, um, then that can't happen. Or if it's a religious school, so if it's like a Catholic school or something like that, then they got their own rules. It's a whole bucket of cheese over there. All right, so just know that. Special review is a change to an IEP that is not an annual review. An annual review. Do you mean an annual IEP? I think we're saying the same thing, just in different terms. Um, so a special review is basically an amendment and uh, annual review is an annual IEP. Am I right? <laughs> Um, the one about North Carolina changes I sent Monday. Okay. Okay. I'll have to look or you might have to send it again. Um, all right. Any other questions, guys? I was told that if an IEP meeting is requested to be recorded, we had to end the meeting immediately until both parties can record. No. Um, so if you're a two-party state, you have to get consent from who you would be taping, okay? So you have to say, hi, team, um, and I would name their names. Um, I, Miss Woods, would like to record this IEP meeting for my daughter. Um, is that okay with you? And they can say yes or no. And if they say no, ask why. And write the reason down why. And state to them, all right? Or what did we talk about, guys? Those of you who are on here, what did we talk about in the group on Tuesday? You want to say to them, please capture this in my PWN and take note. So when you capture something in an IEP, okay, it's a term that isn't like a picture, <laughs> but you're capturing something important that you're noting to them, stating verbally, for them to make note of this occurrence or this statement or what was just done, et cetera. So make sure if they say no, that they capture it in the PWN, all right? And right then, you write down what time it is, the date, and that you're in the IEP, and who said no, okay? Because why would they say no? And they can press record on their phones. You don't think they got their phones with them? Of course they do. They can press record anytime. That's how they do it at, in my meetings. They'll ask me, are you recording? Yep. 
and then they'll get their phones out. All right. They don't even ask me anymore if I'm recording. Um, yeah, you've been lied to. Sure have. Gosh, that's shocker. <laughs> and you know what's ridiculous, too, is there's so many good teachers out there that I feel like a lot of districts screw that for them. You know, I used to be a teacher. My oldest daughter is a teacher. And, you know, I'm not saying principals. There's good and bad ones. But I'm not saying principals because they don't have that kind of control. Um, but districts, screw, and, and principals do have control in a sense of that they're bombarded by the district and then they put pressure on the teachers and so forth. And so it takes a good teacher and then it makes them do things that maybe they wouldn't want to do or not say things that they may want to say. They just keep their mouth shut. Um, and I've had teachers tell me, you know, like I was afraid I was going to lose my job if I said anything to the parent. Or I wanted to tell the parent, you know, that they need to do this, 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 and this. And, you know, I, I felt like if I told the parent that, that it would come back and bite me or, you know, that I could lose my job, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And it's the same thing with, um, say you have a para that works one-on-one -on -one with your child and people and parents have wanted them to come to the IEP meeting. Well, number one, they're not required. They're not paid to come to your IEP meeting. So sorry, but they're not. Even though they know a lot about your kids and it makes sense for them to be there. I get it. I know. Um, my daughter has a one-on-one. -on -one. But you, you can request it all you want, but they're not required to be there. It's not their place to be there. They don't have the experience, per se, to be there um, and contribute the way other team members could. However, what they could contribute to is what they do on a daily with your child. Um, but it's, it's not typically um, advisable because that particular person normally... Um, has created a relationship with your child and you know obviously if they're one-on-one -on -one, hopefully you like them if not get rid of them um and you don't want to put them in that position of saying something because they care about your child in an IEP meeting that they could get in trouble for you don't want that all right you would rather them be your friend and give you information that you can then use and not say where it came from. Yes, I just said that. All right. The teachers, I mean, but you have to have that kind of relationship, you know, um, to where they know that if you found out information that you should know as a parent that the school obviously didn't give you, um, that if the teacher, you need to, this is kind of like a under- it's just kind of a golden rule. If the teacher, if you have a good relationship with the teacher, right? Because there's so many good teachers out there. And you they tell you something that you should know in regards to your child with special needs. But you know that information is good and can help you. You cannot give up who told you that. All right? There has to be a trust factor there. All right? So... If you're told something that you know you need to know from a teacher or a parent or somebody that comes to you, um, you have to hold that trust, all right? You don't want them getting in trouble for it. You'll never get information again from them if you give it up. So there has to be a trust factor there, all right? And um, having that, what would you call it, an ally um, is a good thing. Because some of our kids with special needs can't speak for themselves. And if you have a teacher looking out for your child or a para, and they're willing to tell you things that they probably shouldn't be telling you because the district would have their rear end, then you got to be able to figure out how to use that. I do it all the time. You got to figure out how to use that information and not give up who gave it to you. 
Okay. Just so you know. Um, Michelle's in Virginia with me, Trisha. Um, hi, I hope you're well. Came in late. Hi, Sabrina. How are you? All right. So, and I tell you guys these things because I just keep it real. I don't care who's listening. Um, there's no district or special education person or anybody else that can tell me or you that, hey, you're not allowed to have a friend within the school system who's actually going to give you information that you should know as the parent that's going on with your child in the school system. And because they told you and you're telling parents now to find a friend in the school system so that they can give you information and you just don't give them up so that they can be the person that gives you the information that you need to know that you can use in an IEP. So what? Who wouldn't do that? I'm a mom. I'll do whatever I got to do for my kid. Um, that's right. Never give up an informant. What do they say? Never snitch. All right. You don't snitch. If someone's giving you good information, you don't snitch. All right. That's a that's the golden rule. All right. <laughs> I think it's a golden rule in prison too. All right. And jail. All right. So so that's a good rule to stand by. All right. It's a good rule to stand by with your friends, too. You know, unless somebody's like in danger or something. All right. So obviously, if somebody's in danger, or something illegal was done, then we have to shut our mouths. All right. And I know it's hard for women, you know, we're talking to our friends da, 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 and we talk and it just comes out. And, you know, especially if we're upset, we like throw up on people. You know, it's one of those things. Just don't snitch, all right? Because that person could be your best friend and be giving you information about your child um, that can really help you in creating a case for yourself in regards to getting things you want or say you're going to do process or something, you know? Um, this isn't someone you'll want to really call as a witness or you could. Um, but more than likely, if they work with your child anyway, the school's going to call them as a witness. So it's easy, you know. Um, so just know, know that. That's a good tip. Not that I planned on talking about that tonight, but it's a good tip. All right. Um, never give up the person that's given you information that you need to know as a parent. All right. All right. Because there's too many good teachers and people out there that want... I, I have people join my group and I ask questions. I don't know if you guys are part of my group, but y'all can vouch for me that I have all these questions. All right. And when you join my group, I have these questions like, what are your top three concerns with the IEP, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I have teachers and paras and, you know, other educators who join my group. All right. And I'm glad that they're honest about who they are. I always accept them. I want teachers in my group. Um, and I want people that are interested in the education field. And, you know, hopefully they join the group to learn more because teachers are not educated in special ed unless they're a special education teacher and they're like a pediatrician. They know a little bit about a lot. All right. They're not a specialist. All right. Um, but what's important is, you know, these educators want to know more. They want to know. I had a lady say, hey, you know, I'm not a parent of a child with special needs, but I am an educator and I just want to learn more on how I can support and stand up for my students. That was awesome. I was like, yes, you can join my group. Um, and I'm doing a, just so you guys know, this coming fall, I am doing a summit, a live summit um, that... I'm going to, um, of course, record, and um, it's going to be a lot of specialists. So myself, and I'll have an attorney, I'll have a psychologist, a BCBA, a speech therapist, um, a occupational therapist, all these types of people that are in the special education field talk about certain topics in their arena and in the hopes of helping parents and the parents that catches us live can ask questions for a period of time 
um, and it'll be great. I'm excited about that. So I'm putting that together. Um, it's a lot of work, but um, yeah, so we'll be recording it live, but then it will be available on recording as well. So it's going to be probably in like October, maybe November, um, but it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm excited about that. So I'm going to get ready to get off here, guys. So hopefully you learned a little bit about an amendment. All right. They shouldn't be hard, Lucy. Um, and then you and if it's something difficult, you want to have an IEP meeting anyway. But um, then you learned about PWNs, right, and how they are required by law um, and amendments are allowed by law. And you want to make sure that you download the otter.ai, all right, that will record and transcribe for you. This is crazy. Hi, Amy. How are you? I just saw your name. You're welcome. Um, are you offering CEUs for the event? What's a CEU? CEU. Anybody know what a CEU is? What's a CEU, Trisha? You're like giving me terminology. I don't know. <laughs> I messaged you back, Lucy. Actually, a uh, recording. Message me back. Are you a teacher? Are you guys teachers? I am having teachers. Oh, cool. Yeah, my best friend's a social worker. That's awesome. Yeah, message me. I would definitely have a social worker. You're so welcome, Debbie. <laughs> Grace, you're a teacher. Yeah. Gotcha. So, Luann, are you a teacher? Yeah, Trisha messaged me because I haven't even, I didn't even think about a social worker, but that's a good one. I may even do a counselor, too. Okay. <laughs> good, I'm glad, Trisha. All right, guys, so if you guys are on my um, on my email list, you got an email tonight, check it out, all right? And you'll have to message me, Grace. You're welcome to set up a um, free 15-minute discovery call anytime with me. You just click book me above, and you can PM me anytime on Facebook. And um, don't forget, click notifications and share this. People want to learn more. They do. And parents really want to know more. And I can't tell you how thankful parents um, are when you share things in regards to the IEP or special needs or something to support and help them and not lecture them or, you know, tell them what to do or how to parent their kid. You know, they just want to learn more information so they can help their child. And so share this so that other people can learn too. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, I am going to more than likely go live on Saturday. Do you guys like Saturdays or Sundays? Which one's a better day? Maybe I'll do a poll. Um, but if you guys have not joined the group, 
head over to the group at Autism Mama Rocks IEP and join the group. It's Autism Mama Rocks IEP group, where this is the page. Okay, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to bed soon, but actually I have to go eat dinner first because it was a crazy night. We went on a walk and it was so nice. I was able to clear my head and we walk in the woods and then we got home and I was like, oh my God, I got to go live and I had to take a shower, guys. I had to take a shower. And then... You know, then I come live and of course I'm late and, you know, then I had an eyelash in my eye and, you know, li that's life, right? <laughs> I'm totally normal. <laughs> All right, guys, I will talk to you soon. PM me if you need anything. Book a discovery call if you need to and check your emails. And if you're not on the email list, go join the group. You have to give me your email if you want to or you can give me your email if you want to. That doesn't decipher if you can join the group. It's just a question if you want to get on the email list. Okay. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.